Hi, welcome to SpaceCast. I'm Josh, and today we have a special visitor again. This is Brian, Dr. Brian Whedon from the Secure World Foundation. Dr. Whedon is the Director of Program Planning for the Secure World Foundation, and today we're going to be talking about a topic which is important for all of us living on Earth, is space sustainability. So, welcome again. Glad Thank to be you. here. And uh, so, first of all, you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on in space, right? Space is sort of... Re- it's almost space age version two, right? It's really being looked at for many, many new technologies being used in space, tons of new satellites, larger constellations. Um, and so there's a lot more challenges, new problems with numbers and uh, c- competing for, with, with in the RF spectrum and things. So what are the major challenges that you see in space sustainability? Yeah. So well, sorry, before we start that. What is your definition of space sustainability? No, that's a great question. And, and it's a term that is becoming um, even more widely used. It first kind of made its public appearance in 2010 in the U.S. National Space Policy. Uh, so our organization, our focus is the long-term sustainability of use, uh, use of space. And, and that's because we see all the great benefits, as you suggested, we have from space national security benefits, commercial economic benefits, benefits to monitoring the environment, how we manage resources, all these amazing things. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, the space world, as you said, is going going a period of significant change. We're seeing a proliferation of new actors getting into space, many more countries are coming into space, and a, a growth of commercial space launching lots of more satellites, large constellations, small satellites like CubeSats, all of these new things that are happening. The good news is that all that stuff is hopefully going to be able to provide a lot of new benefits, you know, better ways to use space to benefit our lives. The challenge, and this is where the sustainability comes in, is how do we make sure that all these new uses and new actors and more satellites doesn't harm the ability to use space long term? So for us, that's what sustainability is about. It's not about let's keep it as things are. It's how do we continue to evolve and find new ways to use space, but to do so sustainably. So how do those new missions, how do we kind of mitigate the negative impact they might have on space environment and our ability to use it? So do you think when they design these systems at the beginning, are they doing enough to look at it from the point of view of the holistically of the entire space environment, or that's part of your charter is to get them so that they make sure that they do from design stage zero or design stage one right at the beginning, you know, they, they think about what the effect they're going to have on not just their constellation working or their space mission working, but everybody else up there. Mm -hmm. Now, it's definitely been a a learning process. You know, we first started getting into space that really wasn't a consideration uh, because everyone kind of thought, well, space is so vast and so empty. But over the last several decades of space activities, uh, you know, there's been this growing awareness that that is an important thing to consider. So yes, a- as we see these new companies and these new missions being planned, a lot of them absolutely are taking sustainability into account and are trying to figure out, you know, how do we minimize that impact? In some part, for example, the commercial companies, because that, you know, their business model depends on them being able to operate their satellites in a low risk environment. And, and being able to maintain the health of those satellites to provide the services that are going to pay the bills. So, you know, for a lot of them, there is a self-interest to do it. And, and so we, we, we have seen a lot more, do, uh, a more, more interest. I think part of the challenge is in some of the legacy actors um, uh, or a lot of the, the, just the legacy stuff that's up there that was designed and built and put into space before things like deorbiting within 25 years or moving them out of the out of the active areas at the end of life really became the standard. So that's a big challenge. Um, the other big challenge we have is sort of the, the we'll call the governance framework, the international treaties and the national regulations and policies that sort of provide the oversight of this. They really haven't changed a whole lot since the 1960s, 1970s. And there are still a lot of areas where they're, they're very undeveloped or they're silent on this stuff. So we're still in the mode where we're relying on kind of people to voluntarily be good and to do the right thing. That's a challenge we're looking at. Um, and then finally, I would say there's a lot of challenges in what is that right thing? 
Right? There's still a lot of debates um, in the technical and scientific community over what are the big issues we need to do and how is the best way to manage, let's for example, a large constellation. All right. Speaking of the large constellation, I was able to bring a quick video up of one behind you. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, well, this this is a, 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 a estimate of what it might look like to have a large constellation of a few thousand satellites. Um, uh, yeah, this is a notional one, so this is okay, just... Right. Yep. Um, and, and what you're seeing in the yellow lines there uh, are the satellites that are talking to a ground station, uh, looks like in the western U.S., uh, as they come overhead. So, you know, there's several companies out there that are planning constellations measuring from 7,800 satellites up to several thousand satellites. And, and they're, you know, planning to provide some really interesting services. So, you know, internet broadband for everyone in the world is a pretty cool thing to have. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Um, the, the, the challenge is we've never really seen constellations this large. And so there are, you know, big questions about how do you manage all these satellites that are all at the same altitude so they don't collide with each other and then they don't collide with anything else. There's going to be other space debris out there, maybe other active satellites. Um, and then aside from the physical challenges, there's the radio frequency challenges. These satellites are using spectrum that is also being used by other satellites in geostationary orbit, may be being used by uh, terrestrial networks. So how do you manage that and how do you deconflict that and prevent interference that might harm one or more of those? Um, those are big issues that are, are still kind of being worked out. Uh, but you know we're, we're we're already starting to see the first these consoles being launched, and uh, you know our hope is that those operators are really going to take the sustainability theme to heart and are going to do what they can uh, to minimize any kind of negative impact they might have on the environment. Great. All right. Well, thanks, Brian. If uh, for more information, go to swfound.org or follow Brian on LinkedIn and Twitter and. Just continue to stay in the loop with all the space sustainability discussion and uh, all the insight that Brian provides. Thank you. You're welcome.